Okay. We are now at Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles. Uh, this is a, I think, interesting experiment of Sega's. They released Sonic 3 and wanted to release an add-on, which is what let you play as Knuckles. And so they created the Knuckles cart to attach to the top of Sonic 3, the actual physical cart, and created a very early console expansion with that. Um, I don't remember what secret's up there. I think this is visually the... I don't know if I want to say best, but it, it is visually very distinct compared to the other Sonic games. I, I kind of feel it's a bit busy. Uh, there's, there's a lot of parallax scrolling, a lot of layering going on, a lot of incidental detail in, in the environment. One of the most visually impressive parts we'll see uh, in a moment when I get out of this tree. Sorry. Let us attempt the tree one more time. That I do not remember. I think I may just have to hold forward here. Let's, uh, uh, do not have to hold anything, maybe? Let's try holding forward. That's it. Okay. Uh, what occurs here? I, I, this is, I think, interesting. Not often in the 16-bit day we saw a level sort of completely evolve while playing it like that. Obviously, it, it, it was not occurring within the actual game. It was something that was swapped out, but still a cool effect and pretty unique in that time. Again, Sonic all about the spectacle. I, I, I you know, I, I think it's noteworthy to, to you know, when I, when I say that, the, the actual gameplay of Sonic 3 is not especially different than the gameplay of original Sonic. Uh, everything here is additional. Uh, and, and by that I mean, okay, now I have a fire shield. A fire shield slightly different than a water shield and all the other types of shields I can get in this game. But this does not make a meaningful gameplay change, I don't think at least. And so, you, 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 what you get is just an increase in spectacle, and you compare that to Mario, where each entry in the Mario series really pushed the series forward, and, and for quite a few years, Really, to to the current day, Nintendo has been really great at changing and do that especially well. It has been really great at at changing up Mario, and you know I understand he he's remains a platformer and has for quite a few years, but. He he has received a lot of really creative changes. I think that I, I just I, 
the new power-ups, for example, in Mario, change the gameplay in a way that adding a fire shield and a water shield and a lightning shield instead of just a single overall shield does not change. And I just feel that Sonic just did not evolve like Mario and I think as time went on, I, I don't even know how I managed to get there, um, as time went on it became more and more easy to see how uh, just trying to get uh, some of these bonuses here. Not doing an especially good job at it. I it, it just the weaknesses of the series became more and more obvious as time went on. And, and this is a very technically impressive game. Uh, you noticed probably uh, that when the level moved on to the second stage of this act, or I, I don't remember the nomenclature they use, but w instead of swapping out completely for a new level, loading in a new one, it just quite literally uh, swapped, it, you know, continued on as it was going. And, you know, it, it's, it was that type of sort of impressive technical feats, and, and like I said, this is, I think this is busy, but it is very technically accomplished for a Genesis game, and that spectacle was what sold people on Sonic and on the Genesis in general. And this will most likely be another boss, I believe. Yes. This is going to be a running. This is a, shall we say, pretty difficult stage. If you do anything but just run straight forward the entire time, which I for some reason decided to do. I don't know why. Um, at the beginning of this game, Knuckles is your enemy. He will eventually become your friend, and in Sonic and Knuckles, of course, he is playable. Uh, we'll move on to the Knuckles portion of this in a moment. I believe that will require me to restart. So let's just try to beat this boss first. As I said, difficult unless you just decide to run forward the entire time. good news is, if we die, we can go straight to the Knuckles portion. This would be the last 2D Sonic game released by Sega for quite a while. I believe it was not until the Nintendo DS that we got 
Well, Sega C Sonic CD, I think, came out a little bit after this. I believe. I'm not entirely certain. But... There, Sonic 4 did not come out until just a couple years ago. Uh, and Sonic would go on to do some... Let's say, not especially great 3D stuff, as you saw in Adventure, but even before that we had Sonic, oh my god, we had Sonic 3D Blast, I'm going to actually go into that after we do Sonic and Knuckles, that will kind of end this, uh, this video will, will be Sonic 3D Blast, which I've not played especially a lot of because it is really terrible. I mean, to an extent that Sonic Adventure can only imagine, honestly. And you all know how much I love Sonic Adventure. Oh. Of course, I would lose all my rings this time. But, you know, from a, a standpoint of being a cool spectacle, that this is, to this day, a very cool spectacle, and obviously it is no longer necessarily technically impressive, but it, but it is cool looking for a 2D game, and I think that is... Just something any uh, anyone can relate to, and, and I I wanted to in part sort of bring up the spectacle aspect because you do see a lot of people acting like the focus on spectacle over gameplay is something new, and I disagree. I think it is something that has existed within gaming since gaming started and I I, I think modern gaming gets an unfair rep of being this Uh, these are the bubbles you have to inhale to survive underwater in this series. As you might imagine, it is not the greatest concept. If Mario can survive underwater, so should Sonic, right? Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think the focus on spectacle is just something that has been going on in games for. You know, since the beginning of gaming. And I, I always think it's sad to see modern games get the short end of the stick in regards to that. Especially when you look at really just how simple and just lacking in depth games like this were and it, it is not just Sonic that, that is guilty of that almost all games of this era were just not especially deep titles and nor especially lengthy and a fair number of them do not hold up especially well uh, people like to talk about games of this era as if they're, they're... I've heard people refer to it as the golden age of gaming, which I think is j just incredibly false. Uh, I, I think to me it is like saying the golden age of cinema is the 1920s. It... it gaming... 
I, I, I mean, I think it is possible that gaming has yet to even receive its golden age, but if you were to call any era of gaming the golden age, I, I, I just, I do not think I would list this era. And I, I think a lot of people say refer to this era specifically because it was the era where companies came very close to perfecting 2D games. Um, but I, I think the fact is that, that we've seen games in 3D now and to say that the golden era of games was a time before 3D gaming even existed. I, I, I just, I do not especially agree with that statement. And we are now playing the Knuckles portion. And Knuckles has a slightly different control mechanic. Uh, he can fly. I'm not going to say fly. He can hover for a short period of time and just punch things when, it, when he uh, is hovering like this, uh, like so, um, and so, you know, he, he does not have to go into the, the same, oh god, I believe there is a timer to this, but I'm not, oh, Okay, you can't hit one of the red ones. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to see the bonus stage for Sonic 2 because it is, I think, the most recognizable um, and one of Sega's early attempts at a 3D game. It was not very good, but even for the time it was not very good. Of course it was visually impressive, and as we know that is the key to successful Sonic. Uh, But I, I do think the rose-tinted goggles, so to speak, are very heavily influenced people's opinions of this era of gaming because just, just personally, and, and you know, this era was, you know, my childhood as well, so, you know, I, I, I do not want it to be said that I do not have the nostalgia for this era of games because I do. I just am able to say we have seen so many truly amazing things. I, I am not sure how to get over that with this guy. Uh, we have seen so many amazing things in games over the past 30 years to say that Any area era before the creation of 3D is the pinnacle of what gaming has to offer. I, I think that is silly, but and I think today, and I, I think one of the things that makes ah. Uh, Gaming today significantly better than it was any time in the past was that you have the indie community creating small 2D titles of this sort and at the same time you can have your $60 big budget epics and you know, it, it, you, could, you should also note that uh, this game cost $100 between Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. 
and you compare that to the similar games you can get today for 15 bucks and you know again to people saying there is not a great deal of value in games today I just I, I don't agree with that I think a lot of people like to remember the the PC uh, during this time you know ha had games that were significantly longer and if you look at Doom and uh, Wolfenstein and, and Duke Nukem and other 90s uh, era first-person shooters they were much longer than what you see in a single-player shooter campaign today I don't necessarily um, think it's fair to s judge shooters solely on other shooters as far as length goes um, because uh, there were no first-person shooters on consoles in, until the N64, and so, you know, if you want to sort of say, compare the shooter to the most analogous genre of the day, I, I would say would probably be sort of your beat-em-up action game, or, or your Mega Man style, uh, shooting game if you want and both of those styles of games were incredibly short much shorter than the single player uh, you get in shooters today and most of those it, the only multiplayer option was uh, co-op if that um, Mega Man did not have co-op in the NES days, uh, and so I just I feel a lot of complaints about games these days, and and maybe more specifically complaints saying that a lot of these issues are new and, and are, are something that. It is different than what we necessarily saw previously. I, I just... I don't think that's true. I think that compared to what games were in the late 90s through the, you know, maybe, you know, the decade from 1995 to 2005, the first two generations of 3D consoles, let's call it, you saw games that were much longer than anything that had come before and that has come since. And trying to judge all modern games based on just those games from that that decade I, I think is somewhat unfair and I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this thing how do I get this guy off me okay uh, that We'll do it for Sonic 3. We are going to end with Sonic 3D Blast. Uh, I'm, I might have either split this video in two at the end of Sonic 2, or I might split it now. So if this is the end of the video, then I will upload both parts simultaneously. So you'll be able to see them both in a row. I just may separate them to keep the time down for people with time restrictions.
so hold on for one moment or click on the next video and I'll be right back.